And now, a word from Infirmary Media. Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me here today is my friend... Ivy. Don't sound so excited. Okay. Also, I want you to try to strive to be a little bit louder today for me. Uh, okay. March Madness. March Madness. You stated you have no idea what that means. Yep. Every year, the NCAA basketball tournament, college basketball, Mm -hmm. happens in March. So everybody gets... March Madness, air quoting here, when they start filling out their brackets trying to guess who's going to win the tournament. It's such a big time suck that employers lose billions of dollars of productivity every year to jack wagon employees filling out their brackets. Oh, okay. It's fucking dumb and people bet on this shit and like uh, Warren Buffett, not to be confused with Jimmy Buffett, so not the Margaritaville guy the billionaire investment banker guy hmm. was going to give $100,000 to any employee that had a perfect bracket through so many rounds of this. Sounds nice. So it's like 64 teams, or at least it used to be, now it's 68. Now they try to get four more teams to play into the tournament. So say the four shittiest teams of 64 play the next four decent teams to see who's going to be in the... Yeah. 64, 32, six, and then it's the Sweet 16... The Elite Eight, the Final Four, and then there's nothing for the championship game name. Oh, okay. I decided that I wanted to do my own March Madness style tournament that had nothing to do with basketball. Okay, good. Yeah. With actual anger. Hmm. So I made a, a poll on the show Facebook page of 16 stories where I have raged out and let people pick their favorites. Oh. So it started with the field of the psychotic 16, and then you whittle it down to the irate 8, and then the furious 4, and then I just crown a champion. Oh. A lot of anger. I do. Okay. All right. I do. You don't have as much or the same kind of anger. I've never really seen you mad. Yeah, well... And I We're don't think you I don't things. think you've really ever seen me mad either. So it takes I, a lot. I've seen you miffed. That's just my natural state, though. Agitation. Yes, agitated. But but as you say online, you're a a happy asshole, or what? It, what what is it? Happy asshole is pretty accurate. Happy asshole. So I put it to a poll, and I just want to run through these stories with you as we work our way up to the winner. Okay. Started with sixteen stories. And I'm going from whatever got the least amount of votes to the most amount of votes. March Madness. In uh, in sixth grade, I punched a kid in the nose in a bathroom stall because he went into my desk, into my uh, pencil box, took one of my markers, took one of the caps, and they were trying to play keep away to fuck with me. <laughs> this was right away in the morning. Oh. So when I got there, they were waiting to fuck with me. It's dedication, though. Yeah, they're fucking dicks. <laughs> and most of those kids involved, I wish them nothing but failure in life. Because they took your marker? Because they were dicks that would always fuck with me. <laughs> it was like a sport to them. <laughs> Sounds like they won. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. But not this kid this day. Okay. Because he took it, and then he went to the bathroom... And then when I tried to follow him into the bathroom stall, he threw it in the toilet. <laughs> which he thought was going to be funny, like I was going to fish it out. I thought it was funny. Yeah. So I just, <laughs> without any warning, I just straight jabbed him in the nose, just a quick pop. And then he starts fucking crying. I might get my cap on the toilet. He's like, get it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're 11 and 12 year olds, and this is how we're behaving. That's That's a weird way to start your morning. It is. 
That got zero votes. Yeah, that got zero votes. I mean, it's a it's a common story. I mean, maybe not the pen cap and the toilet, fishing it out, but that's that's very common amongst that age group for men. Dick to, holes to fight, especially in the bathroom. You guys keep that going until high school. It's always yeah. in the bathroom. Well, there's no witnesses, no proof. Pretty much, because you can't have cameras in there. Yeah. Option fifteen. I was playing house league basketball. In Coon Rapids. Not for a school. It's the city puts teams together. Oh, okay. We're playing a game, and there's this nerdy little short kid with glasses. And how much do you know about basketball? Mm, a little bit. I mean, I know the gist of it. He's trying to inbound the ball. Okay. Like, there was a stop and play. They had possession. He's trying to pass it. And I'm just, I'm flapping my arms frantically like this, so he can't pass it. He's yeah. like, do you know how stupid you look? And he goes to pass it. I slap the ball out of the air, and then I run it down for a layup. And this happened like two or three other instances where he was trying to talk shit to me. The next fast break where my team's running down to our basket, he's running by me. And in the crowd, I figure, the ref's not going to see this. I fucking shove that little shit from behind. He goes flying and then like somersaults across (laughs) the goddamn court. And then trying to get away with it. I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? And I I extended my hand to help him up so the ref didn't think it was intentional. Totally got away with it. Oh, that worked out. But I was mad that he was mocking me. It's like, yeah, I might look like an asshole, but guess what, fuckface? I keep stealing the ball from you on the inbound, so who's really the dumb dumb? It's just poor sportsmanship. That's what they do in sports. That's why I couldn't do it. I have bad anger. (laughs) That got one vote. Once again, it's common. I can see why these votes are going this way. Give me something juicy. You ever stab anybody with a pencil? I mean, I've been stabbed with a pencil. That's not the same thing. No. I mean, I feel like me getting stabbed with a pencil is a little worse than you stabbing someone with a pencil, you know, because I got the butt end of it, but... You did. Literally. Yeah. Fifth grade. Again. I can remember when all these happen. This is terrible. It's traumatized you. Fifth grade, I'm sitting at a desk, and I'm doodling on the desk. Oh. And it's my reading class. So I'm not with my homeroom teacher. I'm in another teacher's class because we, you know, moved yep. around for yep. reading class. And the kid comes to his desk to say, hey, erase that. I'm like, you do it. So then it turns into a shoving match. Okay. So then I just I just stabbed him in the leg with my pencil quick. Just like a quick jab? Yeah. You leave the pencil there, take it back? Well, it didn't like go in. Just, just the lead poked it. Oh, okay. I didn't even break the skin. And then I just, I walked out like nothing was going to happen. Well, a few minutes later, you know, he was crying. And then his teacher comes and asks me why I did that. And she's like, <laughs> you stabbed him with a pencil. <laughs> I'm like, well, he was shoving me. I he was, was upset. shoving me. Okay. Two votes for that one. Everybody got stabbed in high school. I didn't or get stabbed. Or middle school. Well, it's because you were the stabber. You're either the one stabbing or you're the one being stabbed. It's kill or be kill in elementary school. I don't know Apparently, if you realize this. You ever uh, play video games and get really angry? Yeah. Yeah, you ever, like, break a controller? I didn't break it, but I attempted to. Okay. Uh, have you ever broken a piece of furniture because you were out of controllers that you had that were shitty enough to break? No. That one, no. Okay, I'm going to paint a picture for you. I'm in my 20s. I'm oh. alone in my apartment. Oh, God. I'm playing Tomb Raider on Xbox 360. I keep dying for some dumb reason that I can't remember. <laughs> And I've got this three-panel coffee table. Yeah. Uh, so the glass panels. And it's, I get pissed, and I'd slam my fist down on it. And it like it bounced one time. I'm like, uh-oh. Well, that's going to break. But then I'm like, maybe it won't break. Maybe the next time I do it, we'll just be fine. The next time, I'm just like, fuck, fuckity. I'm like, uh-oh. So I'm kind of bleeding from right here. Yeah. On the uh, edge of my hand by my pinky. And then uh, from that day forward, I had a gap in the table where there was no pain which was hilarious to watch the cats try to walk across in the dark and not remember there's a missing <laughs> pain. That's messed up. Only two people voted for the Game of Rage. Once again, it's very common. But smashing a glass panel on a table? You know how many white boys punch walls? Why do we have to bring race into this? Because it's usually white boys. How do you know? How do you know black guys don't be doing that shit? Or Latinos? <laughs> you say it? Or I... Asians. Because I know from personal experience, I took a poll. It's like a statistic type Don't deal. Don't say I took a poll. I took a poll. Giggity. Double entendre. Oh, what's an entendre? 
A double entendre is a phrase that can be interpreted two ways. Taking a poll. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody on that one? Buddy? Buddy. Buddy gets it. Buddy gets it. Bony buddy. Taking a poll. Jesus. No, that not Your mind like, doesn't not, click no. on that one? I don't call them poles. I don't think I've ever called them poles. Hmm. Pipes, maybe. Poles. Pipes? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what that's what everybody called it in high school was pipes. Story number twelve. Have you ever gotten mad at somebody for rejecting you and then graffitied on a bridge? Something negative about them graffitied somewhere where you know they'd see it? No, I've never graffitied anything. Jesus Christ. Get out in the world and live. It was too high. I couldn't reach anything. Oh, it was too high. I thought you said I was too high. No, no. Okay, it was that's too how high. it sounded. No, it was too high. Everything like I I thought about it, but Well, you don't necessarily have to, like, climb the water tower like in that 70s show. Okay. So up north, there was this girl. She was a townie in Pine City where my folks have a weekend campground they go to. Okay. And I tried to hook up with her, like, dating-wise. And then she had some idiotic reason why she couldn't. Apparently the most popular boy in school she thought was going to ask her out. Oh, it wasn't really a thing. Somebody had made a joke, and she took it for serious. And I'm just like, really, you dupe? Burn in hell! Yeah, that's... Yeah. Blame her. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I got mad and spray-painted, Jenny has a smelly cunt underneath a bridge. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty bold. How, yeah. how old were you in that one? I, 15, 16. Yeah, that's pretty bold for that age. Yeah. It wasn't like an overpass where cars drive underneath. It was a bridge over a stream... In Pine City. How'd you do that? You have to like bungee down a little bit or? No, no. It's, or just like inside There's, there's the embankments loop. underneath the bridge where people oh. could stand and I was not the first person to graffiti there. They'd been graffitiing since the days of when Iron Maiden was popular. Because mm. somebody in giant block letters spray painted Iron Maiden on the opposite side of the bridge. Like it was fucking huge. Almost as big <laughs> as a person each letter. Nice. Yeah. So she saw that. She was not too appreciative. Oh. Well, she did end up seeing it in that little dark corner of the world. Nice. Yeah. Well, well she just lived on the other side of the bridge, so. Oh, so there was intentional purpose. Fucking in that, right. That position. Okay. Don't you shun me for stupid but, reasons. <laughs> well, how is she supposed to know? You should have just said, hey, it's a joke. But you didn't. You it's just... not my place to tell her that popular boy Wesley was not actually going to ask her out. <laughs> okay. Two votes for that. Hmm. Kind of mean. Now we use the C word. It was probably because of the C word. Yeah, it's it's fine. Now we're we're raising the stakes in the votes. Okay, like uh, by a, a distinctive degree. Or... Well, some people voted one time when I clearly said vote for eight stories. Oh, okay. So the, these numbers sound like nobody cared. It was very skewed by the number of people that did not follow the directions properly. Ah, fair enough. Okay. Seventh grade, kids talking shit to me. Okay. As boys are trying to exude dominance at that age. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, playing basketball in the gym before the day starts. And he said something, and I came back with something else, and then he tells me to go fuck my own mother. <laughs> That's so bold at that so, age. Yeah. Goodness, okay. So I walked up to him and I slapped the glasses off his face. Oh, he's a glasses wearer. Yeah. You got dissed by somebody who wears glasses. Yeah, and then like a week later we we talked it out and then we ended up becoming friends for years. Oh, okay. I mean, that, that's a good turnaround. That's how guys do it. We test each other's nuts, and then once we get all the poison out, we're just like, oh, well, now we're not angry anymore. I guess so it's time to figure out how, what we have in common, and now we get along, and holy shit. Oh. It's like a typical guy It's an thing. aggressive friendship. That's a lot it. of guys okay. will fight and then share a beer afterwards. It's weird. You guys start off violent, become friends. Women typically end up starting very nice and cordial and then they end in a fight because like, girls can't be friends with other girls for more than like three four years at a time can't be friends with anybody apparently <laughs> god three people like the story of me slapping <laughs> glasses off his face nice which takes us to number 10 you have seen the closet door in our hallway upstairs yeah with all the punchy holes yeah and all the notes i wrote over the punchy holes as to what got me there I didn't read the notes. I didn't see those. Well, that's it's like a piece of pop art. Well, I just I kind of just ignore it. I, it's like mind over matter. To yeah. it. I'm a witness at that point. As the beast calls it, this is like a shrine to anger. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> I gave up. Right. I gave up sweets, and then uh, the kids didn't get any less annoying. 
or listen any better. So yeah. I could smack the kids on the ass or I could punch a door that I'm going to replace anyway. Hmm. All right. So I punched the door repeatedly. About a dozen holes. Jesus. With such uh, phrases as New Year's Eve or uh, I miss chocolate. Ah. I gave the holes names, huh? I did. All right. I did. Purposeful. At least they have a purpose in life. God damn him. <laughs> and the scratching at the litter box. <laughs> Buddy, you fucking dick. Uh, story number nine. The back porch. I don't know if you ever saw it. Well, no, you didn't ever see it. You know what lattice work is? No. It's thin strips of wood that they crisscross to make like diamond patterns. Oh, yeah. And people put them like under trailers mm-hmm. to cover the gap. But we had big panels of that on the back porch over the screen because that's what came with the house. Well, I had a, interviewed for a job somewhere and uh, I got beat out only because somebody else applied that had already been a cop. Oh, okay. So this was for a different jail, and I was like a lock for getting this job until this other person. Applied, okay. So I was upset. Cock sucker! So I took a board, and I threw it at the lattice work. But throwing a board wasn't enough. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel (laughs) like I had exercised the demons. All right. So I took that board and swung it like a baseball bat repeatedly until I smashed most of the lattice work off the fucking porch. And then at Mm -hmm. one point, a piece of wood flies up, hits me in the upper lip, Splits my lip open. (laughs) And then for the next few days, I've just got this like scab and then it's purple around it. Yeah. So it looks terrible. And I had to go to the dentist. Mm. And he looks, he's like, what's uh, what's going on with your lip there? (laughs) Like he thought it was a love sore of some sort. Ooh. Yeah, it wasn't. I'm like, yeah. So you ever just chop wood and then like a piece of wood comes flying up in your face? He's like, I've chopped wood, but I've never been hit with wood particles or debris. I'm like, "Mm, there you go. It. It hit me. I had to explain it away. I did a good job. Uh-huh. And that got four votes. That one's, that one's pretty. That one's funny. That one's funny. Yeah, so now oh. we're into the irate eight. Okay. March Madness. 2017, I had an infamous meltdown at my parents' house due to my mother getting too gifty with the kids when I explicitly told her smaller Christmases we're a combined family now. Everybody gets less. There's less money to go around with four kids than there were with two. Okay. So what does she do? She buys several our generation dolls for the girls. Several. Oh. Like the juice already had one or two, so she buys her two. And Chi Chi had one, so she buys her two. And little E, the stepdaughter, had none, so she buys her three. And I'm like, these are 35 bucks a pop. We have no room for this shit. Right. They are just ripping through packages. <laughs> and they're like, oh, awesome. And they throw it to the side. Like, there's no appreciation for the thought that went into finding this, the cost of the item, and what you had to do to get the money. And by what they had to do was my dad had to work because my mom doesn't work. Okay. So I got mad, and I stormed out, and then I punched their mailbox and dented it. And then I went for a walk for a while, and then I came back, and then I screamed at my mother for like 10 minutes straight. And then I said, Christmas is over. Everybody get in the fucking car. We're going home. Leave the toys here. Yeah, that would have ruined my Christmas. Well, the girls were a little upset, but I felt vilified. (laughs) I figured you would. So, yeah, I didn't talk to my mom for five months after that. Jesus. Hey, fuck her. She thought I was in the wrong. Oh, my God. I said don't buy him so much. My wife said don't buy him so much. The beast. Their own mother said don't buy him so much. But, you know, my mom's got to spoil him. Her mom's got to compete and shows up with a carload full of toys. My mother-in-law's got to buy him a bunch of shit, but at least she goes to, like, Goodwill, buy a a Target where everything that doesn't get clearance sailed gets donated. Hmm. There's a little bit of method to the mayhem there. But otherwise, no, it's like, you're fucking teaching my kids to not appreciate anything. Why do I want to buy them anything now when they just think, oh, where's the next one? Where's the next package? Like, yeah. I really try to find cool shit for them. Hmm. So it's like, not only are you stealing my joy, because they're not going to enjoy what I get them, knowing that you're just going to shower them with stupid plastic pieces of shit. <laughs> and they're just, in the meantime, they're going to think that everybody has money to buy anything they want all the time. Not the case. That's fair. Yeah. Six votes for that one. 
You ever punched anybody in the throat? Yeah. That one's good. Oh, tell me about that. It was just, it was my cousin. And what, what led up to it? Um. Because that's an extreme reaction. A throat punch. Well, it was just, it's accessible for my height. It's either that or the, the balls. So this really was only due to convenience, not because you were aiming to show somebody what the fuck was going on. No, it was more of a game. A game. Yeah. Like rock, paper, scissors, throat punch, I win? No, it was more of like who gets throat, like you just, it's like tag in a sense. We throat punched each other throughout the day. That's dangerous. It's just, I guess, now that I should Jesus talk about Christ. And Yeah, until you fucking cave in somebody's esophagus. Yeah, no, I think I only got one really bad anger story. Other than that, I've been pretty, I keep my anger under wraps in a sense. More. Well, you're an adult now, so you go to jail for that shit. Cause yeah, yeah. People are babies and they'll they'll fucking mess with you. And then if you react violently, they go crying to the cops. I was, I grew up, I was, when I was younger, I was more of like a, a silent anger person. You I let would, it build up? I let it build up. And then once I got to like... Right before high school, my little cousin, he had, he played, uh, he did wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one big enough to play with him to like practice and stuff like that. And so, Matt wrestling or like backyard wrestling? uh, Backyard wrestling. Okay. Well, he took it too. He always took it too far. He didn't take it. He didn't ever play by the rules, but he pinned me down, which was all fine and dandy because it was, it was fine. And then I was just trying to wiggle my way out because I don't know how to like actually wrestle so i'm just you know wiggling out like that's all it was and he had gone through a spitting phase and he like had me pinned and spit in my face and like i don't know i like blacked out for a second i somehow got my knees up and my feet against his chest and i had kicked him off of me and he flung into the tv Hmm. across the room and like hit the ground crying and i just got up and left the room wiping my face going to the bathroom and his mom came in and was like what the hell did you do to my son i'm like tell him not to fucking spit in my face and i went and washed my face and he was pretty butthurt all day about that i was cool and calm and collected afterwards because i felt like i was like all right well he just got donkey kicked across the room like the kid flew for sure nice yeah i was a it's pretty i mean i'm pretty proud of it in a sense <laughs> No, there's not much remorse. Just don't ever spit in my face. Like, don't spit at me. That's such a bad trigger. Okay, note that, people. Ivy does not like to be spat on, even if nope. she asks you to do it. I don't ever ask. In some weird spur-of-the-moment thing. Nope. Don't do it. It could be a test. No. Don't do it. It's It's, like, almost kind of happened during sex once, and that he almost got knocked out. Wasn't the perfect... Like he was joking he was going to spit on you? No, like he was trying to spit on her. I'm like, please don't oh, ever... Oh, your Virginia. My Virginia. Please don't don't ever spit. That's so disgusting. It's That's such right. a dirty... I forgot about that. You don't like thing. saliva as lubrication. No. Which is antithetical to science. It's just, ugh. Ugh. Don't spit at me. Well, I guess note that also. Don't try to spit in Ivy's cooch. Don't spit at me at all. Don't Reach s- for a bottle of Kentucky Jelly. Ugh. Ugh, just thinking about it. It's just making me mad all over again. Well, maybe this will make you feel better. My dad at a young age told me if you ever punch somebody in the throat, you can kill them. Hmm. I didn't necessarily believe him, but at, when you say that... Yeah. Now I'm like, really? Oh, you got excited. It Different like, reaction. It piqued my interest. Of course. Because I was a very inquisitive child. Like, I have to yeah. test all the shit my dad tells me because it sounds like he's trying to... Sounds like it turned into a challenge. Stress it too much just to shock me. And I can see through my dad. He's a terrible liar. So I had punched a few kids in the throat, kind of. (laughs) Okay. But never at full force. So I'm walking at the end of the day in high school. And this kid shoves me and then punches me in the kidney. (laughs) You dick! And I'm walking with this other mutual friend of ours. So I don't know if he thought the kidney punch was for fun or if he was just being an asshole. So I grabbed his shoulder, spun him around, and gave him a straight punch right to the throat. Solid. And the, the other friend with me is like, God damn. I, I don't know if he'd never seen anybody punch someone in the throat. But I did it, and then the kid just walked away, just kind of like rubbing his throat. <laughs> like I decked him clear in the Adam's apple. 
I feel like it would feel different for you guys because of the Adam Apple. Yeah, it, it fucking sucks. I've gotten hit there, kind of, but never punched in the throat. Ah. Uh, yeah, kind been of a, like throat chopped. Throat chopped? Yeah, just, just straight chop. Like, Who did that to you? The bar that I worked at, a lot of the cooks, they would just come up and chop you. <laughs> just... Was it an Asian cuisine bar? No. Jesus. Very low grade everything. Well, six votes for the throat punch. Nice. Six votes for this next story. I was in sixth grade, and it was a hot button if you told me that somebody called my sister a retard. That was the instant, I'm going to fight. I don't care who the fuck it is. You're getting punched. So one of the kids that used to tease me incessantly to get a rise out of me for his entertainment Mm -hmm. told me some girl in our class called my sister a retard. Well, she was one of the bitchy, mean girls, so I bought it. And instead of asking her and then going back to him... I walked up to her, and I punched her in the face. Oh, my God. You're terrible. (laughs) So then, you know, uh, we both got onto the office because she's got to explain what happened. And on the walk there, we actually had the conversation that should have predicated the punch. Yeah. And I'm like, I am so fucking sorry. And then I found out it was her birthday. You punched the poor girl on her birthday. Well, in my defense, she was kind of a bitch all the time. And she didn't. Re- she played like the Darlene Connor role all the time, like the snooty, fucking wisecracking, know-it-all bad girl. So you got a puncher. Don't call my sister a retard. But did she? But she had. <laughs> but in my mind, somebody said she did, and I'm like, well, people do it all ah. the fucking time, so I'm going to go with that. You're just a reactor. That's, that's yeah. what I'm getting from these. Stories. It took me many years to get that under control. Ah, uh, and I the, don't doubt that. The worst part after that was that her boyfriend was one of the bigger, more popular kids that played mm-hmm. football. So he wanted to fight. It's I'm like, it's a huge misunderstanding. She's fine. She put some ice on her fat lip. Yeah, so it's all right, though. He didn't He didn't come after me. She talked him down. Ah, oh, so your savior. <laughs> Maybe. I probably could have gotten in some good shots. He's one of the few popular kids I never threw down with. It's fair. Fucking jock kids. <laughs> Seven votes for the time I headbutted a guy in the face. Headbutts usually really entertain people. They don't happen too often. Nobody really trusts their head like that. You got to know how to do it. You got to hit somebody with the crown of your head right here at your hairline. Mm. That's the hardest part of your body, the top of the skull here. That's where you headbutt people with. Oh. Not your forehead. I think that's where most here. people mess up. Is they, they just get too excited, short shot it, and get the forehead. Yeah, you don't just do what Zinedine Zidane did in the World Cup that time, headbutting a guy in the chest to the ground, unless you know what you're doing. Oh. So I met my friend Rick James's townhouse, sitting in an easy chair with my legs up, and his friend uh, is an asshole. He's a fat, drunken asshole with a lazy eye. Nice. Thinks he knows everything, thinks he's king shit, and he's God's gift to women. He talks about girls that see him like they react like, oh my God, he's such a stud. No. No. Like he could not have confabulated more details about how women viewed him. Mm. If a fat guy with a lazy eye that looked like he cut his own hair tried to hit on you. Yeah. I mean, even if, you know, they look like a Ken doll, they usually don't get too very far. Very defensive. Well, Usually I always see it as a purpose. I'm like, get out of here. Get out. Get. You, you not even give him a chance to nope. talk to you? Nope. Immediately beeline it. Just gone. Bye. What if a guy says Hi. They're like, hi. And then they start the conversation. I'm like, eh, eh, gotta go. You are hard to please, aren't you? I just walk away. Jesus, anti-social Christ. Pretty much. Well, anyway, I used to wear studded belts a lot because oh, I was a punk rocker. Of course you were. So he made fun of me. He's like, I've seen a belt like that before <laughs> on a girl. I'm like, hey, that's funny. Almost. Hey, isn't your girlfriend pregnant not on purpose? He's like, you fucking talking shit about my life? I'm like, yeah, Dingleberry. <laughs> life? Have you heard about pulling out? This is a long time ago before I had kids. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot to talk now, huh? Right. So he goes out on the patio to smoke, and it's like raining. Okay. So then he, he walks back to the door. He's like, yeah, well, at least I'm not dating some stupid bitch who lives three states away with four kids. I'm like, she lives two states away, and it's two kids. Doubled it. That makes sense. A little exaggeration. Well, I was dating my friend from work's sister who lived up in the UP. And I would drive up there to see her every other weekend. Mm, nice. And stay for four or five days. Anyway, I took great offense to that. I went out on the patio. I had not struck a person 
in at least 10 years. And I told him, here's what I'm going to need from you. I'm going to need an apology because <laughs> she has nothing to do with this. That's uncalled for. And I haven't hit a person in 10 years, but I'll gladly break that fucking streak right now. And I cock my fist back. I'm like, apologize, motherfucker. <laughs> Show me you mean it. Go ahead, get down on one knee. And he's like, no. So as I'm cocking my fist back, he's looking at my hand. I headbutted him in the fucking eyeball. <laughs> the lazy one or? No. <laughs> the good, the good eye. one. That's messed. Which is funny that he didn't see that coming. There's the dad joke. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now we're up to the furious four. All right. Uh. What is the, the vote bracket for these ones? Uh, seven and above. Mm, okay. I mean, the the headbutting the guy is kind of tight. Like, uh, stories three, four, and five are all tied at seven. And then oh. there's two obvious, number one and number two. But anyway, the headbutt, story number four, seven votes for the time I told my then-at-the-time girlfriend's neighbor to kill himself. Ah. She lived in Maplewood. The houses have conjoined driveways. Okay. She had left her purse in the car one day, unlocked, while she went inside to shower after work. Suddenly, her purse goes missing. Ah. And with a driveway that's as long as theirs and up a hill to get to their house, there's no question it was this fucking drunken loser next door neighbor who's in his 40s and on disability. He has no money. And the next uh, part of the day, he comes home in the afternoon in a taxi. Where do you get taxi money? With two big bags from the liquor store. Where do you get liquor money? (laughs) Oh, God. I connected the dots. They found her purse underneath underneath a fence post a couple houses away like he was walking to the liquor right, store right he just walked so as the next time I was there I'm digging in my car he walks up behind me mm-hmm. and he's like trying to look in my car like, what the fuck do you want I'm like it's not bad <laughs> enough you stole her purse and took her money oh didn't you I'm like fuck you you know you did that don't lie to me trying to steal where'd you get purse? the money for the booze where'd you get the money for the taxi you broke as a joke loser motherfucker <laughs> you are such a piece of shit I implore you right now, go into the house, make yourself a sandwich, then go upstairs with the toaster, jump into a full bathtub of water. <laughs> Fucking kill yourself, Paul. Fucking oh, kill yourself. Of course his name was Paul. And he goes, I wish I had the guts to do it. <laughs> yeah. And then he <laughs> saunters off into the house as I'm still screaming at him. Well, my girlfriend's stepfather, who was only like nine years older than me. What? Her mom had her young. Okay. And then her mom was dating a younger man. Okay. So he's a smaller guy than me, but he does concrete. So he's got like, like yeah, br- decent build on him. He comes and he grabs me, like man hugs me and starts walking me into the house because he <laughs> hears me screaming all this. <laughs> and her little sister's watching out the window crying because she doesn't know what's going on thinking I'm going to get hurt. Right. I told a man to kill himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's out there. You're going to love this next one. It involves the beast. I don't know if I'm going to love you it will. You will. necessarily. No, you will because you don't like it when I talk shit about her, but I'm not talking shit about her. Okay. We were on the phone. She was being her particularly cunty self. <laughs> As you know, she can be a tad impatient and quick to anger. I don't think you can deny that. She's got a quick fuse. That's yeah. That's for sure. So, seven votes for the time I nearly broke my foot kicking the porch. Whose porch? Like My porch. The side of the porch. Side of the porch here? Okay. Yeah. So by the swing. Yeah. And I'm out there with my wife, and I just got off the phone with the beast, and I'm irate. So I go to kick the porch, because I got to punch or kick something to get my anger out. Yep. <laughs> I didn't kick it with a front kick like I should have, and taking the full brace mm-hmm. with the entire surface of yep. the bottom of my foot. I kicked it with my toes, <laughs> and then immediately fell down on one knee. Because it hurt so goddamn bad, and then I couldn't walk on it for, like, two weeks without limping. Thankfully, I was on paternity leave, so I didn't have to show it off at work. So I had to wrap my foot in ice and rest (laughs) it for a week, and then it was bruised all to shit. Nice. So I may have broke it, but I never went and got it x-rayed. Right. But I'm pretty sure I broke it, or I at least bruised you, the like, bones to the fractured point. Fractured it in a sense. Yeah, something. It fucking got fat as hell. Yeah, fat I mean, as hell and bruising. That's indicative of a break, typically. Yeah, it's a bit aggressive reaction, sir. So yeah, she sets me off like that. <laughs> this doesn't sound like it takes a lot these days. Well, you know what our relationship is like. Yeah. We don't play nicey nice. 
It's mostly she says mean things she thinks is true to get at me. And then I come back with mean things that are true because it's a lot more meaningful if you rip on somebody for shit that they actually partake in. <laughs> for instance, you know, like drunk driving or domestic assault. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> Jesus. So now we're down to the final two. <laughs> and these ones are more than the seven? Eight votes for the time I hit my friend Neil in the kidney with a golf club. Ow! Jeez. In my Is defense... his kidney okay? Yeah, his kidney's okay, I think. Okay. Okay. He hasn't had to go and, like, see a specialist, and this happened many number of years ago. He threw a chunk of gravel this big, <laughs> bigger than a softball, and it hit me, like, in the back of the leg. Nice. And I was waiting to start a game of golf. Now, this is before we were very close. We were, like, quasi-friends, oh. and I was there with number one fan, Tim. Okay. Who was my friend up north there first, and I have known the longest of any of my friends... And we're gearing up to celebrate his birthday on the show. It's going to be spectacular. <laughs> he does not know what he's in for. Yeah, I don't like your excitement. It's right. kind of scary at right. this point. So Neil hits me with a chunk of gravel. I grab my two wood out of my golf bag and I swing it at his back. And he's riding his bike. I hit him in the left kidney. Oh, come on. And he on. immediately buckles down onto the ground and spends 20 minutes laying there. And I'm pretty sure he pissed a little blood later. And then I just stood over him, talking shit, <laughs> getting everything I wanted to nice. say out, and then I'd spit on him a few times. And you, what? Yeah, and I spit you spit, on him. come. See, yeah, no, wouldn't be able to fight with you. I don't spit on people very often. That's, I think, the one time I've ever spit on somebody, really. Still, I'll expect it now. Yeah, eight votes for that story, including Neil. <laughs> Oddly enough. Well, he's the star of the show. I get, I'd vote I don't for know. it, too. <laughs> I didn't ask him. I just think that's so interesting. I'm like, is he going to vote for this one? And then he did. I'm like, holy shit. He voted for it. Good for okay. him. The number one story, and it's not even like that good, but people, just because of the reference, 10 people voted for this. I think I was like 13. Oh I was God. up at the lake with my parents, and this is when Neil was working. And uh, Tim was working. So I didn't have anybody to hang out with that particular weekend, and I knew I wouldn't. So I had taped WCW Monday Nitro. Okay. And my mom had taken the tape, because I left it in the VCR. All right. She taped over it with the Country Music Awards. (laughs) All right. You bitch! So I had an opportunity to not be stuck at the camper with my sister who was disabled and needed someone to watch her and stay with her. Right. So they left to go do some stupid bullshit. And I'm stuck there. And I'm like, fine. If I'm fucking stuck here, it's nitro time. And I pop that tape in. And what do I fucking see? Country music bullshit. And I fast forwarded and rewound. I checked every (laughs) square inch of that goddamn tape. Nothing. Yeah, not even a glimpse of hope. Gone. All right. So I took the tape. And I went out to the field behind the edge of the campground line with my golf club. Yeah. And I fucking drove that bitch into oblivion. All right. I smashed the fuck out of that tape, and she never got to see the Country Music Awards. It's a fair trade. A little excessive, but a fair trade nonetheless. I would have liked Neil getting hit with the golf club to win. I I feel like because the last two have golf clubs in it and spitting, I, I can understand why well, they took the cake. What put the WCW over the top was two guys that run my podcast network do a show called Dueling Decades. It's like okay. the 80s versus 90s. Two teams, they each pick a decade and defend a certain month. Like okay. January 1985 versus what it, it could be January 95 or November. I don't know. That's how they do it. Okay. Because they're pop culture buffs, they saw WCW Monday Nitro and voted for that. So it's kind of like a screw job skewed win. All right. Well. Just like this year's National Basketball Championship was decided by what some people saw as a blown call, but was actually a good call. All right. So Virginia ends up winning over Texas Tech here in town, and a lot of people wanted Texas Tech to win, and another guy out there stood to win $350,000. I could use that. March Madness. So there's your winner of this year's March Madness. I don't imagine I'll have an additional 16 anger stories next year unless I think really hard. I mean, unless I just hope there's no new ones. You never know. I don't want to know. You never know. Some days I just want to take a lead pipe and brain someone for being a complete piece of shit. (laughs) Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. A lot of aggression there, bud. Hi, it's the body, and you're listening to Blumpkin and Friends. 
So we've reached the point in the show when it's time to play a game. Oh, great. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Blumpkin and Friends proudly brings to you the Rock, Paper, Scissors Intercontinental Championship Challenge Championship of the World! What are we playing? You are, after six attempts at the RPS Challenge, three and three. Three wins, three losses. I'll take that. Yeah, two of your losses are to the juice and one's to me. I don't know how, I I feel like that's a burn for both of us. What do you mean? The fact that she beat me twice, you beat me once, and I lost to her, so. Well, you've also beaten her, and then I think beaten number one fan, Tim. I I have a chart of all the results. There's a Word document with all the stats. Oh, geez. Hey, you got to know these things. All right. So who am I going against? So you are going up against Graham of It Radio. Oh. Graham is a multi-time champion if you look behind you. He's been champion uh, three or four times. Oh. He's an accomplished... He's the one that had the show that used to have the RPS challenge, and then he stopped doing the show, and it was just sitting there not getting used. So Mm -hmm. I adopted it for my show to keep it going, because he's my friend. I was on that show. All right. Well, I'm prepared for this L. For the... Wow, she's already calling it... (laughs) The following match is set for one fall with five hands of rock, paper, scissors and is non-title competition between resident lady of the show, Daddy Ivy, <laughs> in her work clothes, no less. Yep, nice little polo. Against the proprietor of the game, the creator of the game, and multiple-time champion Graham of It Radio. Mecca like a high, Mecca. Fuck, fuck, fuck! I gotta grab a pen. I don't know why I'm whispering. I don't either. I'm just going with it at this point. I was just doing over there. Thank what? You. Have you never seen me draw the chart for how I map this out? No, usually the There's microphone an... is in the way, so I just I can't see Ivy, past it. A G for Graham. Me. Without further ado, hand number one. Um, rock. You went rock. He went paper. <laughs> Right. Already out of the gate, you are losing. Oh. Try to put in some effort. <laughs> Think positive. I always, I just, I like, I like the spot. I just, I just go boom. That's what I do. First one that pops up. Are you up. John Madden now? Probably. I don't know. I just, I just like. I don't like if I think too hard about it, then I start sweating. Like literally sweating. Yeah, my hands are clammy right now. Oh, that's weird. They're always clammy. Don't take, don't take it personal. Okay. Duly noted. All right. Hand, hand holding off the table. Oh, hand geez. number two. Uh, scissors. You said scissors, and he said scissors. Perfect, scissors. No point there. Well, technically we say skizzers. Skizzers. Yeah. Why? I don't know if I like that. Skizzers. Why do you guys say skizzers? Because originally there was this kid who was his friend's son, and when he was little he would say, rock, paper, skizzles. Oh, okay, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. Hand number three. All right. Um, rock again. You said rock. He said paper. All right. I don't like this. You need to get the next two. <laughs> okay, okay. Just to tie for overtime. This pressure. So really, sweat it out. Maybe wipe your hands mm. on your pants, but they don't they're look not, like they absorb nope, much liquid because they are not. What are they? They're they athletic pants, but I athletic I don't pants. I don't know what exactly they're supposed to do. Lycra. They keep every everything's just wet. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's scratch that out. Let's scratch that out. And number four. Scissors. You said scissors. He said rock. <laughs> All right, this is cute. So you lose, but we have to play it out Ugh. for the sake of score. Fine. Hand number five. Paper. You said paper. He said schizos. Unbelievable. God damn, four to nothing with I a know. tie. I know, I know. You got just effed right in the A on that one. Yeah, that one's, that one's I'm definitely taking it. Mm, yeah. I'm going to isolate that. <laughs> I'm going to isolate you saying, yeah, I'm definitely taking it. Wow. I don't know what you're going to do with that. Well, it's funny because you also talked about your pants and everything wet, and then you recanted that too. Yeah. And I'm actually working on a song titled Moist. Oh, of course you so are. So I could take both of those sound clips 
And then uh, uh, a few minutes ago, you were going to say come on, but you just said come. Yeah. So I feel like I'm going to chop up all three of those and use them in the song. You can be in a song as you continue to inspire me to write song lyrics about weird stuff, like your mom yeah. shitting her pants. You are welcome. I'm glad I just give you all the lyrical genius yep. thoughts. I just You're like a muse. You inspire me accidentally. Accidentally, on purpose. I don't know. You're taking it as you're taking it at this point. I am. I am. Interact with the show on Twitter at Blumpkin Show. That is at Blumpkin Show. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Blumpkin and friends. We are on iTunes and on Podbean at blumpkinshow.podbean.com. For original songs, go to soundcloud.com slash Blumpkin Music. And for related shows on the same podcast network, go to infirmary.org for infirmary media podcasts. I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. And I'm Ivy. Boy, a lot of excitement there. <laughs> you told me not to be so excited, so I toned it down to my normal normal self. Okay, Daria. Daria? Is that like diarrhea? No, but that's what Beavis and Butthead called her. Oh. Daria. Good night. March Madness.